Blacklist. Black Market. Black Magic. Black Sheep. Blackmail. Black Mood. These are words that all of us use in our language on a daily basis. However, let's take a closer look. The word black in all of these words means the negative or less ideal. There is magic we tell our children beautiful stories about. And there's black magic, the evil version that we tell them to stay away from. Markets are fun. Black markets are illegal. Often in our language, the word black symbolizes negativity. And while this might not be our intention at all, the use of the words over time could lead to thoughts, ideas, or beliefs that are untrue. For example, black people's blood coagulates more quickly. Black people's skin is thicker than whites, and whites have more efficient respiratory systems than blacks. These untrue statements, the negative ways of expressing black in our language, have shaped the way we think about people, oftentimes unintentionally creating differences rather than unity in certain aspects of life. In this series, we're zooming in on an important aspect, health disparities for blacks and people of color. Let's talk, episode one, here we go. Health disparities are a higher burden of illness, injury, disability, or mortality experienced by one group relative to another. This means that people from different groups can have the same illness while the treatment, experience, and outcome can be very different. A great way to overcome a disparity is to look at it using the fixed versus the growth mindset. People in a fixed mindset believe you either are or aren't good at something. Your abilities, intelligence, and talents are just fixed traits. People in a growth mindset, however, understand that their talents and abilities can develop through effort, good teaching, and persistence. A fixed mindset is at the forefront of false beliefs and biases, also seen when it comes to black people and people of color. In fact, some doctors still believe there is a biological difference between black and white people registering pain. This idea results in the undertreatment of pain for black Americans compared to white Americans. White Americans are more likely than blacks to be prescribed stronger pain medications for equivalent ailments contributing to and maintaining health disparities. These health disparities are not limited to black Americans here in the U.S. For example, back home here in New Zealand, Māori are prescribed medication at a lower rate than non-Māori. Reported by Pharmac, they receive fewer tests and a lower percentage of medical follow-ups and referrals. Māori obesity rates are much higher and Māori adults well, they're 1.5 times more likely to experience high to very high levels of anxiety and depression compared to other ethnic groups. Health disparities for Māori are real and it breaks my heart because it's my tangata whenua that are being disadvantaged from preventable actions. If this continues at the rate it's going, then what sort of life will that be for my or your mokapuna? People are people, regardless of race, sharing common interests such as working, eating, sleeping, and exercising. We also share similar, if not the same, concerns as others, such as health care and support. With a growth mindset, we are able to find common ground and become unified in life. We then embrace change. In the next episode, we will take a look at important medical statistics. We will also discuss how nutrition plays a part in navigating health disparities. For now, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.